Hello there. My name is Ed Romero, and this is the Out of Office Chat, where I talk about life outside the office. And today, you know, today it's the crux of our conversation is going to be around the Pixar movie Cars. Uh, it's it's going to be quite the scene. Uh, before getting into it, uh, honestly, I just wanted to catch you all up with what's been going on with me, how life's been going. Yeah, it's been about a month since uh, we last spoke. Uh, I believe the last episode came out around June nineteenth, and. Um, <clears throat> My goal was to have these episodes pushed out around that same time every single month. I know I'm a couple of weeks late, but it's been, been a bit busy. You know, it's been a bit busy. Uh, I was hoping that the summer would kind of like uh, be a lot more tame. But, you know, it's it's not bad. Everyone, uh, Everyone's, you know, happy, healthy, you know, as, as much as they can be. Uh, so it's it's good. Um, you know, my, my wife has summers off, so oof. I'd be lying to y'all if I if I said I was not jealous because I totally am. You know, I totally am. She uh, she hangs about. She goes to visit her family, her friends, uh, hangs out with a little one. I'm I'm totally jealous about that. You know, just hanging out with uh, with my son, with our son, and just getting to uh, getting to kind of know him, getting to experience new new things, uh, and it's always nice. You know. Um, you know, we got to go away this past weekend, which was great. I don't know if you caught the last episode, but uh, I think it was the last episode, the one before then, maybe the one before then. I don't know. Uh, but we were supposed to go to Disney World, and uh, you know that didn't pan out. So we decided to go to um, we decided to go to uh, Michigan just for for the weekend. Unfortunately, we had a family emergency. Uh, on Thursday, and we were kind of debating on whether or not we should go. Uh, we talked to folks, and it's not like we were able to go, and, and we did. You know, we did. Thankfully, everyone is okay right now. Um, but we were worried that, oh my gosh, we're not going to go away again. Uh, so we did go. We did go to Michigan, St. Joseph, to be exact, and it's a beautiful town. It's a. Uh, it's quite lovely. It's a small town, um, just little small shops here and there. It's a beach town. Uh, we got to catch in, uh, take in the sun Saturday, walked around a lot, we had pizza. It was great. Uh, and overall, and you know what we did? You know, something we don't do often is we all kind of watched TV as a family. Uh, it was really, really cool. I love I love TV. I love watching TV shows, movies, uh, just laughing it up. You know, it's funny because we watched it with our our two year old. So, and that kind of you know that'll segue nicely into the next bit uh, around cars. But our two year old has uh, has been obsessed with cars over the last uh, probably several months, and um, it's cute. Don't get me wrong. I love it. I love it. And I'll explain to you. Why. I, I you know I'll talk to you right now. Uh, I love it because he begins to act out every single scene on there. Uh, he has little toy cars, his little characters. He knows them all. Um, but the problem is, is that now he wants to watch it every single day and, you know, not necessarily let mommy and poppy uh, watch TV. He'll, he'll, he'll be like, okay, it's tu turno. It's your turn. And then we'll change it into something that we want to watch. Like, no, 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 but we, I want to put ver carros. And so, it's our turn only if we watch cars. Uh, so, but this past Saturday, it was actually really nice. We got to watch something else. We, <laughs> we watched Talladega Nights. Yeah, Talladega Nights is a racing movie, so kind of like cars. Uh, and on top of that, we watched a little bit of Bob's Burgers. Uh, and, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, and a little a snippet of, of, of Legally Blonde. I think I've watched that movie maybe once, maybe once, or just clips of it. Uh, it seemed pretty good. It seemed pretty enjoyable. Uh, so that that was that. And, you know, the next day on Sunday we walked around a bit. We uh, we we got on a bike. Um, we walked around the main main street. You know, oh, it was it was great. Uh, our son was loving it. Uh, it was tiring though. I'm out of shape. Sometimes you know I, I feel like I, I'm out of shape. Um, but it was it was it was tiring because it was hot for one. Um, and it was a pretty heavy bike. It wasn't like one of those two, like, uh, two wheels. I had like four wheels, kind of like a little, uh, I don't know, like a little carriage of sorts. Our son was up front. My wife and I were uh, the ones pedaling and we just kept at it. So, but I mean, all in all, it was good. Um, traffic on the way back was a little rough, but overall it was, it was a very, very nice weekend. You know, I even felt up to this point where I, when I got home, I started to realize, oh man, my back doesn't hurt me as much. You know, it's that stress, the stress, the stress of the, of, of the, of the day, the day, the business, the businesses, I should say. Um, so that, that definitely kind of sits on you, but 
it's nice to get away. It's nice to kind of change, uh, uh, to have a change of pace, uh, especially when it's with your family. So I really enjoyed that. I really did. Um, but on top of that, you know, business has been, you know, pretty, pretty busy, you know, on both ends. I just wrapped up, you know what, here, I'll show you. You can actually hear it too. Uh, I rewarded myself with an, uh, an horchata latte, uh, iced. Uh, I just finished up presenting uh, a deliverable and it's probably the third main deliverable I've had in the last month. So I, I'm, I'm pretty tired, you know, on top of having an ongoing client and, and, you know, my other job. So it's, it's, a, it's a bit busy, uh, which is not bad, but I, I, I'm definitely looking forward to a little bit of downtime. Uh, and that's probably going to come hopefully really soon. Hopefully by the next time we talk. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. So talking about this main, main segment on the show, um, the Cars movie, the Pixar Cars film, Pixar film Cars. That's how we say it. Um, at this point, I've probably watched 12, probably watched it 12 times already. You know, it's it's been a while. It's, it's a lot because <laughs> uh, every time I want, uh, you know, we don't always watch movies. But when we do, it's going to be cars and it's in the evenings especially as we wind down. You know, the days get, you know, pretty heavy. So we decide to reward ourselves with just some family bonding time watching a movie. Uh, if not, then playing games, what have you. Um, so I've probably watched it 10 times. And if you have not known this about me, if this is your first time listening, um, well, get this. I really do enjoy looking at some of like uh, the minutia of films and kind of highlighting its quality. I've done it a couple of times with American Gangster was a couple of uh, uh, some ways back. I'm sure I did with other films. I, I don't know at this point. Uh, I talk a lot about movies and, and books. Um, but in this case, I the first couple of times I watched it, it was a little bit difficult for me to understand because we're we're bringing up our son in Spanish. And a part of that also means watching films and TV shows in Spanish. Now I can, at a conversational level, I can keep up um, Spanish or a Spanish conversation. But as I start watching movies in Spanish, that gets a, that gets a little difficult for me. So the first couple of times, just kind of getting, you know, just get in the base, get in the base, trying to understand what was, what was happening in, in the, in the movie. I had never watched cars prior to, to this time. Um, oh, I'm getting a spam call. Let me turn that off. Um, I had never watched cars prior to that time. I think, it, you know, it's, it's so popular. I think it came out in 06. So I was just trying to get the, get the, gist of it trying to get the plot point down as i was navigating the the spanish audio um and it, it can still be tough as an english speaker and someone who can conversate in spanish it can still be tough watching uh some sort of media uh be it a tv show or film uh in spanish but after a while you know <laughs> in addition to having audio and spanish i decided to use english in subtitles because i was like i gotta make sense of it in some way i got i gotta appreciate it um so I began to, you know, also pair up the audio with the the English and it made understanding it a little bit more seamless. Um, and it made me enjoy the film overall. So why do I want to talk about Cars in addition to having watched like a dozen times? Overall, it's a pretty good movie. It's actually, a, it's, a, it's very wholesome, uh, innocent humor, funny. It's really funny. And it has pretty good character growth and a character arc. So um, if you haven't watched Cars, let me kind of uh, let me kind of paint the scene for you on what what the movie's about. Um, there are more than likely going to be spoilers in this episode, so uh, watch out for that. Um, so Cars is essentially about an upstart. Um, we call it in English Lightning McQueen, in Spanish Rayo McQueen. Uh, but this young upstart Lightning McQueen, who is essentially getting ready to race in the coveted Piston Cup to win basically, uh, I guess, a championship of, of sorts. Championship uh, of sorts. And at this point in the movie, or at this point in the season, I should say, he's pretty much neck and neck with two other other famous cars. That is uh, the King, uh, who is a blue car, and Chick Hicks, who is the green car. Uh, now, I think it's important to say that Ryan McQueen is red. Um, so... What ends up happening within the Piston Cup is they all tie for thir thir for first, I should say. And what ends up having to happen is they have to have a re-race. So, and it's all taking place in California. So after after the race at the Piston Cup, 
they move on. They go to, and you can you can see it right off the bat. This young upstart, Lightning McQueen, he's a jerk. There's no way of getting around it, folks. He is not nice. He is all about himself, self centered, quite mean. Um, and uh, so what ends up happening is he has to travel to California to go meet up this 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 uh, uh, new sponsorship company or this this company called Dynaco, uh, and in hopes that one he can be the new sponsor, given that the king. So the other individual that's tied in in, uh, in, uh, in first, he's retiring. So he wants to kind of take up a spot. Uh, but at the same time, Chick Hicks, his rival, uh, he is also trying to court Dinoco. So they're both kind of aiming for it to go into California. So what ensues is this wacky situation where, um, you know, uh, Lightning McQueen ends up getting um, sidetracked from going to California and ends up causing destruction in a small town called Radiator Springs uh, in, uh, in, um, God, you know, I've watched this movie so much, so many times I can name, I can name these little, uh, little locations and places and people. Um, but ends up, he ends up having, he ends up ending up in, uh, in Radiator Springs, tearing up their road and he has to rebuild all of it. And, you know, as, as an entitled little individual, he does not want to do any of it. You know, he just wants to go to the race, get famous, kind of uh, be Dynaco's new uh, new racer. And, uh, you know, it actually turns out to be pretty nice for him, kind of humbling to to go to a little location like Radiator Spring, Springs where they don't have kind of the glitz and glamour of what's happening in, in like other areas. Um, he meets a suite of characters, you know, like they're all they're all like unique in their own way. Mater, Ramon, uh, the Sheriff, Sally, um, oh, what's this little one's name? Uh, Guido and Luigi. <laughs> those are two are awesome. I love those guys. Um, so they all like come with the little perks and they all have different responsibilities in the, in the, in the, uh, in the little town. Mater's the tow truck. Ramon is, uh, I guess he does like body paint. Luigi, and uh, and Guido are our tire tire salesman. Sally is the town lawyer. Uh, so you know he, he he ends up beginning to have a conversation across all of them, uh, with all of them. And you know a- after the first couple of like was half hour hour like he is totally irritated by them. He decides to go ahead and um, you know take a trip with with Sally up this road. And as he's taking this trip, he kind of it kind of dawns on him how beautiful it is just to stop take a breath and admire kind of like the beauty of, of what you're, where you're looking at, you know? Um, and so, I mean, I think, I think around this point, that's when he gets to change a heart and begins to embrace this little town and actually begin to develop relationships and, and rapports with all these individuals. And Mater is a huge help. He is a massive help uh, in doing that. I mean, he's, he's kind of a goofball, but uh, he, he actually ends up befriending Mater in, in their own wacky little way. Uh, so, <laughs> what ends up happening is he ends up still having to go to to um, to the Piston Cup. He gets found out. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, Doc Hudson, who will uh, subsequent, subsequently be his his mentor, reports on him. You know, he calls the media and says, uh, "We have uh, Lightning McQueen in this town," and they come and basically they, they all kind of swoop in on him and take him off to uh, the Piston Cup, wherein he races uh, for the title. And at that point, he's pretty much he's wanting to go back you know he's wanting to go back to to the the small town life of radiator springs uh he's longing for that and it's kind of messing up with his um messing up with his racing style and then he realizes all his little buddies from radiator springs actually ended up going to uh the piston cup for him and it kind of gives him that that kind of energy to go and complete the race uh he doesn't win he doesn't win, and actually, the person that wins is Chick Hicks, who is his rival through some nefarious and quite cruel, uh, I guess, means. Uh, what he ends up doing, though, what ends up happening is the king, he flips his car, he crashes, and this is his last race, by the way. So he ends up crashing in his last race. So um, what Lightning McQueen does is he actually gets behind um, the king and, and kind of pushes him through the finish line. He comes in third, um, but it's actually quite applauded across the entire audience within the movie. And it's actually very heartwarming as well to see that Uh, reason being is the King crashed um, and his new, I guess, uh, chief of, 
I don't know if I have an idea. His, his new his new coach or whatever, his mentor Doc Hudson, well, he was a racer as well. So he had a, he, his career ended through a crash. In any case, the movie ends. It goes on. Uh, well, it goes on and ends a little bit after that. And um, overall, it's it's like I mentioned, it's a pretty solid film. I really do enjoy it. Now, why do I enjoy it? Hmm? That's that's the million dollar question. Like I told you, it is uh, it's humorous, but we'll talk about that in a moment. But it it, it honestly shows a lot of character growth uh, in an individual and um, in the individual that is uh, Lightning McQueen. Now, you may think, oh, well, you're digging too much into it. It's a film. Yes, it's true. But most films and most books, most pieces of, I guess, media um, where there is a main character or a plot, uh, they depend on this character growth. It's funnily enough, I'm reading a, I'm reading a book. Um, I'm reading a book. Uh, it's called Story Brand, and it, it kind of outlines the same trajectory where there has to be an individual that has an existential threat uh, and then an in, in, uh, 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 intrinsic threat, and they have to overcome it through the support of uh, a mentor uh, or mentors to honestly fulfill goal. And this is, follows the same formula. You know, you have... Uh, Lightning McQueen, who is, by the way, uh, he's lost. You can you can kind of tell it early on in, in in the film when his agents asking him, uh, you know, we have twenty tickets to the uh, Piston Cup. Uh, who should we who should we send over? And he kind of like, what which of your friends should we send them to? And he kind of is lost because he doesn't have any friends. He doesn't really you know mingle with anybody um so he's feeling lost i i, I imagine and kind of like alone um and throughout the film what it does is he kind of realizes that this kind of this pursuit of of trying to be the dynaco uh poster child and, and ultimately getting uh getting into the films becoming famous and rich uh it means really very little because he's still very much uh sad and alone and the sentiment is also echoed in Sally. Sally, like I mentioned earlier, was a lawyer. Uh, she is a Porsche. Okay, don't judge. Uh, she's a Porsche uh, from Los Angeles uh, who happened to be a lawyer. And she was feeling a little bit burnt out. And she ended up at Radiator Springs being adopted by the folks and living you know, living with them since. Um, so she kind of tells her tells him uh, that she's not really quite happy. She wasn't quite happy before she got to Radiator Springs. And, and he he kind of, he basically feels the same way. So throughout all that, you know, he, he begins to kind of open up, makes himself a little bit vulnerable. And one thing I do love about the film is that as it starts, you know, he he kind of thinks he can do it all by himself. He thinks that he knows what's the best thing for him for himself. And then he begins to have these conversations with Doc Hudson, who doesn't really like him, if I'm being honest. Um, Doc Hudson, it reveals that he was a former racer himself. So what's cool is that prior to, to Lightning McQueen finding that out, Doc Hudson was trying to help him out and advise him how to, how to properly race uh, on dirt. Uh, he was basically, no, I, I don't, you know, he was too into himself. He didn't really want the help. But then he kind of witnesses the fact that Doc Hudson is a racer, that he can actually, you know, he can hold his own. He can race. Uh, at that point, Doc doesn't really want to do anything with him. Um, but you can kind of see that Lightning wants, is, is he's kind of pulling back kind of his ego. He's beginning to open up a little bit. He's beginning to realize he doesn't really know what he th as much as he thinks he does. Uh, and it's only when he goes out to um, the Piston Cup, you know, he's right back where he started the film. He's at the Piston Cup. He's racing against competitors, looking to win the title. Nothing really has changed except those couple of days at Radiator Springs. And he realizes how lonely he actually is and how much he actually was changed by the individuals from Radiator Springs. Uh, so it's kind of this revelation. Um, and at that point, you know, actions always speak louder than words. And, and like I mentioned earlier, there was a, a point where Chick Hicks basically rammed into or knocked off the King, whom I imagine is a much older vehicle, um, and, and threw him for a loop and he crashed. Uh, at that point, what was so coveted to Lightning McQueen, the title, he decided to just push it aside and make sure that he can help this individual who 
by happenstance, offered him uh, some advice early on in the film. So he basically helped guide the king through to the last uh, last lap uh, and helped him you know, finish up his race. So a lot of great character growth, uh, a lot of good stuff, um, you know, really cool, uh, colorful characters. Um, the humor is, is pretty, it's pretty darn good. Um, I mean, there's one point where, uh, Mater, who is a tow truck of the town, uh, he's, he's Lightning McQueen's lawyer for like a hot second, like five seconds. And then the next, at the next scene, he's like asking him for $30,000 in legal fees, which I found hilarious in, in a, in a Pixar film, a character doing that. Um, there's another bit where early on in the film, these two, uh, female, uh, cars come up to Lightning McQueen and they're like, we're, uh, uh, I don't, I only can say it in Spanish. It's almost, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, basically we're number one fans of Rayo McQueen. And then they, they, they pull out their light bulbs or they kind of flashed the light bulbs, but it occurred to me like the sixth time I watched it, that those two female cars are actually flashing lightning McQueen. And I started cracking up as I realized that. Um, and there are a lot of small little lines. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. A lot of small little lines, uh, that we pick up on now and then my wife, my wife and I, um, and that kind of is what ties into the Spanish component, you know, like, like I mentioned earlier, we're watching it in Spanish. My son is watching it in Spanish, so he's pretty well. He pretty much well understands the plot pretty well. Um, now, granted, I watched it twelve times, I think roughly, um, and I'm still picking up a few things here and there. But I have to applaud Pixar or Disney really on their Spanish and captions because they're what it's what I, I watch the movies in Spanish, but the captions are in English. But what it's taught me was that. They invest a lot of time into their actual uh, Spanish dialogue, meaning they don't do a, a an exact uh, translation from their English counterpart. They, they don't. Some phrases do not make any sense in Spanish. So it sounds like the movie or those that fo the folks that created the, the movie or the Spanish version of the movie tried really, really, really hard to make it make sense for Spanish. Uh, so it's not perfectly translated and, and it's meant to kind of, again, um, keep the pace going. Uh, but let's see here. I think, uh, here we go. Uh, so low and slow is a good example. There's one point where Ramon, Ramon he's a he's a um, a low rider, and in the English version he says low and slow as he begins to kind of enjoy kind of a, his, uh, his 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 closeness to the ground. So he's relaxing. He's like low and slow. And in in Spanish, he says lento y contento. So slow and happy is how it translates in. Uh, in uh, in English, but imagine like in the English version, the variant low and slow, it would be bajo y despacio or something like that. But lento and contento, that's it, it rolls off the tongue really nicely, especially if you speak Spanish. It's it's pretty it's pretty cool. Um, so the Spanish translations they make it so that they're unique to the story and unique to the situation, um, and they still kind of make sense. So I love that. I, I applaud I applaud that. And you know what's funny is what I tried to do. I try to, I try to look into uh, seeing what the history of of Spanish translations for English films was, um, as 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 film uh, as cinema I kind of like kicked off, and I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find any history or nice little tidbits uh, on it because you know, I, I don't know. I don't know why. The only thing I was able to find uh, was this. Uh, I guess. Previous, uh, previously in the late 1920s, early 1930s, to kind of uh, account or accommodate for the growing audiences globally, um, there were there were Spanish versions of films or like multilingual versions of films, meaning a film would be filmed in English, but then it would be completely redone for uh, Spanish uh, or Polish or what have you. Nowadays, I don't think that happens. Uh, it doesn't happen often, but can you can imagine the cost investment to doing refilming films in different languages? I mean, I mean, refilming everything, like with the actors, with the sets, and just a different language. Um, not with the same actors, but probably different actors. But that proved to be pretty costly. Um, 1930s, I mean, 1930s, 1920s. That's when kind of the silent film era was dying off, um, and and language starting being uh, picking up. But um, that that fad of multilingual films didn't didn't really stick around. It died off, from what I gather, in a couple of uh, in a couple of uh, in a couple of years. So 
another cool thing I started to do is I started to dig into kind of the production. I like, I like to, I love to see how, how some films are made, especially with Pixar films. Cause I feel like Disney, they invest a ton of time or Pixar invests a ton of time into making sure that their, their films are one accurate, creative, and have a nice little balance between kind of, uh, between the two. So <clears throat> I didn't, I didn't learn a ton or I did, um, so I found out that one of the designers, uh, design directors, uh, ended up dying during the film, uh, a filming of, 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 of cars. His name was Joe Raft. Um, he happened to play Big Red. Big Red, which is, was a big old, uh, uh, red fire truck in cars. He, he didn't say much. He kind of just, I think, basically moaned. He cried. Um, so I dug into, I, I read that and then he ended up dying. Joe Raft ended up dying in a car accident. Um, ironically he uh he unfortunately fell off a cliff uh he drove off a cliff and it was by accident and he had passengers that perished as well so that was unfortunate but looking at kind of his joe raft's impact to not just pixar films but also animation in general um after his death he started getting a lot of like uh in memory and remembrance of so on uh i think he passed away in 04 05 and um his kind of like memories kept going into like the mid uh 20 teens you know so 2015 2016 so i imagine this gentleman had a pretty big impact into into the design uh into film design um now doug hudson who's paid by paul newman i think he paul newman is an actor that's pretty darn popular within pixar he ended up passing away after pixar after after the release i should say of cars so i I was surprised that Doc Hudson didn't come back in Cars 2 and Cars 3. Um, and yes, I've watched Cars 2 and Cars 3. We've had to, you know. Our little one wanted to see more, so we were like, why not? Um, and between you and I, I like Cars 3 more than I like Cars 2. Cars 2 is, is it's nice. It's goofy. But Cars 3 is a little bit more, uh, I guess there's more meat. Um, but Doc wasn't there. Uh, he was actually a big component Nonetheless, in Cars 3, uh, I really did like Cars 3 a lot. You thought there was character growth in Cars 1. Uh, check out Cars 3. It's, it's pretty neat. I like it. I like what uh, I like the, the kind of change that uh, Lightning Queen goes through. Um, so that was the last. Uh, Zach Hudson, they, they kind of phased out that character uh, in Cars because of Paul Newman's death. Um, so on top of that, I mean, there's a lot of cool nuggets of information. The, the directors, the designers, and the creators or whatever, they, they ended up taking road trips across route 66 uh which really inspired uh the movie uh and i was really curious too i was like i was talking to my wife i was like babe how how long do you think they, it takes to kind of like get a movie done kind of render so if, for those that aren't familiar with when the rendering process when we talk about design or specific graphics or animation you know i think from, i'm not i'm not a professional but from what I understand is that when you have an animation frame, uh, it's all animated and you ask the software or you requested the software basically based on your parameters to render the image for a final state. So you can have kind of like frames that are schematics, uh, kind of like wireframes, and based again on what you ask it to, it'll render it to the final product. Um, so one frame, I think I read initially that it took uh, one car's frame uh, two to four hours to render. No, a couple of days or something like that. And no, it wasn't. It wasn't a couple hours. It was a couple of days for sure. So I'll, I looked up um, how long it took. I don't remember which movie it was. It might have been Cars. It might have been another Pixar film. But I I requested how I searched up how long it took a Pixar film to to render. You know, from wireframes to final state. It took four years working. Four years to render. Four years. That's crazy. And this is with, I think it was either a hundred or a thousand uh, computers um, kind of rendering, helping it render. Ah, that is wild. You know, um, that is wild. Fun fact about me. I, uh, in high school, <clears throat> in high school, I was an architecture major. I went to a college prep. Uh, I was an architecture major. And, um, 
I final year we were supposed to design like kind of uh, our own buildings, our own, you know, whatever we wanted. Uh, and I decided to do a mansion, you know, and it was pretty neat. Like I really enjoyed it. You got to define how big the walls were, how big the rooms were, kind of where placements of windows and what have you were going to be. Um, it rendered, I mean, I don't remember how long it took to render, but I think it was over the weekend. So it took a while. And this was just, a, it's like three or four images. That's really all it is. Well, it was one, it was one building. So I imagine if I were rich, I would have built this mansion. Um, it was one, in, one mansion, but multiple views. So from like the corner, from the inside, from the back, whatever. So it was like three or four views. It took a whole weekend for it to render. It's, it's pretty wild stuff. I didn't go into architecture. I, I just didn't, didn't work out. I went to finance. That's all right. Things happen the way they happen. Happy the way we're. Okay. So, I mean, that's kind of the Cars film. Uh, I really did enjoy it. It was a lot of fun. My wife even told me, like, maybe maybe not push it to, uh, don't push it past 20 minutes talking about Cars. I think I'm actually a little bit over 20 minutes talking about Cars. Um, I really enjoyed it. I I love looking into it. Uh you know, picking up on these little nuggets of, of, uh, of like, um, kind of like little facts and, uh, and whatnot. We'll see how it goes. I, I really, I, you know, I, I think after a while, I'm probably going to want to watch something new, but with my son, he's so into it and we have so many toys around cars already. I'm a little hesitant on him I'm getting him started on like toy story or, or finding Nemo or something like that, because, you know, he's going to, absorb it so much he's gonna want to watch it and as parents we're gonna want to buy the toys for him so he can act it out it's so freaking cute he acts it out um so that's that um as far as everything else is going for me like i, I told y'all you know i'm just keeping at it you know keeping busy uh i i want to get y'all i want to review a book um hopefully next time i'm still like i'm like 30 pages away from finishing it um it's called uh this migrant soul i think i mentioned in my last podcast my last episode where it's about um kind of this individual uh latino who's kind of trying to find uh his and our place in the world um it's really cool and i think it hits it hits a lot of points that i've, I've been feeling and i really enjoy it i want to share it with y'all um so hopefully next time i get to do that uh, i've also wanted to do a review uh one of my favorite films and i'm not even gonna spoil it maybe next time i'll, I'll let you know uh but i, I want to do a, a review of one of my films and we'll see how that goes uh i think hopefully hopefully come september things uh will kind of lighten up just a little bit you know uh, just give me a little bit of breathing room uh i'm hoping to kind of get away for a couple of days just me and my thoughts at first i wanted to get away so i can plan out uh, career and kind of work uh, for the rest of the year and going into 2024. Oh my God. You believe that? 2024. You thought August kind of sneaking up on you was something else. Uh, you're thinking 2024 is a trip. So it'll be here before you know it, folks. Um, but I, I don't, I want to focus on, on, on like planning for work and stuff. But, you know, I, I'm actually pretty, I'm pretty tired, you know. I kind of want to focus on on myself, kind of uh, de-stress. Um, I started seeing a chiropractor, uh, and he started, like, massaging my back. He's like, you really are really tense up here. I was like, tell me something I don't know, Doc, you know? So I'm hoping to get away in September, go to a couple of days at a, lo a, a, a lodge, you know, just relax, get a nice book. I want to get a new book. I don't know what's going to be, but, you know, I want to get a new book, kind of enjoy it. Um and we'll see. Hopefully next time. Hopefully next time we chat, uh, some of that stuff, uh, stuff is, uh, would, would come to fruition. Um, but as of now, that's all I have. Thank you so much for listening to me talk about cars for about 30, 20 minutes uh, and catching up with me. Um, and hopefully you all have a great, hopefully, month. Um, and I'll talk to you all next time. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.